what we are about to share here with you today are some of the innovations that are from each of these pillars. Right? We, may, we don't have time to cover all of them, but there are a couple that we've selected specifically for this audience. The first of this is around healthcare. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to introduce our first innovation, one that was passed, part of our prized entrepreneurship program. You know, Zensai is it's a glass, it's a goggle, a pair of goggles, if you will, a pair of glasses, if you will, for the visually impaired. And what it does is, uh, you know, uh, you know, there are so many things, by the way, that are available to, to people today that are visually uh, canes and simple, simple things, walking dog for that matter. And there are some technology things, you know, people have belts with haptic sensors in them. Uh, but most of these innovations, it, you know, excluding the cane, the walking dog, none of them have actually made it into the markets. Or none of them have actually made big impacts if they have entered the market at all. So this was our challenge. Can we do something that is easy, affordable, potentially uh, um, become a fashion statement in some senses as well. And here it is, this, these are the glasses. If I can, yep, there we go. Uh, that model is a little cheeky, but then maybe the next picture will actually show a better, be better glass. But so what happens is, you know, what he's developed is sensors, haptic sensors that are embedded. So if you can use this as an, another poor substitute, sensors that will go on the side, which will hit our, this part of the face under the eyes, and basically what it, is, what it will tell you is what is happening in front of you, right? Is there anything in front of me? So as I'm walking, for example, here's a step. The sensor will pick up stuff based on a camera that is also embedded in the, in the glasses in the late, later versions, but in the first version we're using a mobile camera. So, so it will tell me that there's a step. So I know there's a step and it might give us a sense of depth. It has audible pieces that we can stick in the ear and that's what it is. So now if I move to this side, there's a podium here, there's some kind of obstruction. It'll tell me by using this left part of my eye that there's something here, so I have to be careful. The, the last thing it's expected to do is it, it's expected to recognize regular objects, so tables, chairs. Once it sees it, it will go back into the cloud, store that data, and say this is what a, what a chair is. Once this, one, if, I, if I am the visually impaired person, I walk there and there's a chair, Immediately, I'll get a response in my ear that says, ah, a chair is in two feet away from you on the left-hand side or right-hand side. Again, that is uh, uh, given to me by the sensors as well. It was earlier challenging to render three DICOM images on mobile platforms due to memory constraints as we cannot apply lossy compression techniques on such images, else we'd lose important information from the image which could be critical to diagnosis. The Radio Touch viewer works in a tree-based architecture where it renders the information on the zoom levels so that the image size could be reduced without compromising image quality. Based on the zoom level, the amount of information is increased via annotations from a part for that part of the image. To interact with real-life 3D objects on a mobile platform with almost zero memory footprint. And as, as, as you can see, the kind of interactivity that we have on this particular application and the fact that it does not hog memory at all, device memory at all. It can revolutionize the way we do product marketing today, the way we learn and explore multimedia content. Take a virtual tour of the, of the vehicle, change color, play music, actually drive the car as well, open the trunk, and a lot more.